Welcome back everybody. This is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I'm opening this video with a, um, a view of a pile of dirty cotton swabs. And you might think, why in the world is he subjecting me to viewing dirty cotton swabs? <laughs> um, I mentioned in the past uh, when I did my tools video or things that I use to overhaul sewing machines with, and I mentioned cotton swabs that I go through a ton of them and I definitely do. Uh, and there's a reason for that. <clears throat> if anything, this, this pile, and I'm not finished yet, uh, in, in using uh, cotton swabs on some of the parts of a machine I'm overhauling right here, this is uh, an example of why all sewing machines from the vintage era, if they have not received an overhaul, they probably need to. Now, you know, some of you may have had machines for, I don't know, 40 years or more. And you may say, we well, you know what, I've always sewed with it. I've just oiled it, you know, did a little cleaning on the feed dogs and that's all I needed. And that's great. Uh, however, I wanted to emphasize to all of you just, just uh, in, th these machines run in spite of the dirt, but it's always really good for the longevity of a sewing machine uh, a vintage machine, if you want to keep it going uh, and you want it to perform at its, at its maximum, you really do want to give it service. You can see all of this stuff and I'll show you in a minute where it came from. In fact, uh, this is uh, another Viking Husqvarna um, free arm multi-stitch sewing machine. Now this machine, and I'll talk about it in a different video, uh, is slightly different than the one uh, that I was comparing it to in an, uh, yet another video where I showed you all uh, this machine next to the 19E that the restoration had been completed on and how machines can look alike, they can look quite similar, but, they, but of course they had different features and different price points. Now, uh, I wanted to focus today on this area. I have, basically, I have taken screws out of the free arm, right, set right here, and of course it had its top <clears throat> and you can see the whoop, come here. you can see the feed dog or needle plate here and of course it had uh, screws held this on I've taken these off that's pretty easy to do it's not very difficult uh, they're pretty easy to spot now one of the reasons I do this is because even if a machine is, this machine had a little dust on it, but it, even when a machine is beautiful and totally clean and, you know, spit polish, you really don't know um, how much maintenance, if any, it has ever gotten. So, for example, I showed you this big pile of uh, cotton swaps here. I see another little dust clump there that, <laughs> that just came out. Um, and what you're looking at is basically the shuttle area. This is, of course, uh, the way Husqvarna designed their shuttle and uh, underneath the free arm that underneath the pretty covering is you can see the mechanics of the machine you'll also see this is a big felt pad that was designed uh, I like these because they hold oil in place so you don't have to oil certain parts of the machine as often um, and it's it's rather it's rather clever it's like a giant oiling wick because I've showed you guys the wicks on the Singer 99s and the 185s, the Singer 66s, and this was uh, yet another use of wicking to help feed lubrication to moving parts. Now, you might, uh, oh, we just got sun out, so now I've got really bright sunlight. Let's see if we can get the camera to give us a little focus here. So what I was doing, and I'll show you, the first thing I did was once I got the free arm cover off, let's change the angle there, uh, this was, the um, the uh, the cover piece for this is where you can see the little the little notch. This is where the finger, if you will, for the bobbin case lines up, and <clears throat> this also holds the hook in place. Right, it keeps it from falling out in this design. So I took the screws out of this cover. And I wasn't sure, I never know if the screws I take out of a part are gonna be the same size. And so I always try to sort of put them in the, uh, I'll actually lay them down in sort of a pattern. Uh, you can see this, these two were the bottom two. And then this, this screw right here was for the top left. There is not one, it only is held in with three screws. 
So I took those out very carefully. They turned easily. Had they not, I would have waited and maybe even added some oil to soften them up because this piece, and you see this in some of the singers that were, that were still well-made and uh, virtually all metal. Sometimes you'll see this. This is a metal cover. Uh, we have a metal cover. And then there's like a nylon piece back here. Now, the reason I still consider this an heirloom machine is because a lot of times you will see plastic used in machines where there really is not uh, any mechanical stress, right? And as I've explained before with knobs and buttons, if it moves freely, um, it still may need to be lubricated in the back. If, as in these knobs, these knobs were not, these were very stiff when I got the machine, and I followed the advice I've been giving to all of you, I did not try to force them. I went behind the machine in another video, I'll show you how I did that. But for the time being, I wanted to show you this. Um, some of these machines go years without any maintenance at all. The owner might uh, you know, put a drop of oil up top and they just use it because the machines work so well. What I did was when I took this off, there was some old lint here. Now lint, when it's dry, well typically you can, you, know, you can brush it off fairly easily. But someone had went to oil in this area and they put a little too much. It didn't hurt the machine, but it caused the lint to kind of clump up if you will, and that's when you get these, uh, you can see some on the cotton swab there. So I cleaned this off very carefully. I did not, by the way, put uh, the cotton swab in alcohol. Why? Because I don't know how this plastic will react with it. Uh, and just like alcohol will damage paint, it can also damage soft parts like rubbers or plastics. And there's no need to do that. Just using a dry cotton swab, I was able to get anything that was stuck on this. The other thing I wanted to show you was the hook. Now the hook here, and I'm gonna to try to zoom in, see, what, see if we can, uh, see if I can, there we go. If you look at the hook, like most of the hook, shuttle, and race areas of vintage sewing machines, it is beautifully formed, it was machined. These were very costly to produce uh, by the, you can see another little piece of lint there I just brushed off. Um, and what happens is, these machines have parts that are often having to, to interact with each other, okay? Now this is all steel, and so I'm going to dip my cotton swab in alcohol for this. And basically, all of the swabs that you saw there, I was cleaning, I cleaned the cover I just showed you, and then I was cleaning here. Now, you can look on the back, there wasn't really much back there, but you can easily reach that. But what about inside? Let's say you look at it, you say, well, that looks pretty clean but go in here and you'll notice there's a rim. There's a rim, I wonder if it's gonna focus for me. There, you'll see it, and I'll take my little crochet hook. I appreciate my, one, of my, one or two of my viewers telling me what this tool was. I have some old dental tools, but this is actually a little crochet hook, and it has a little smooth end because I don't wanna scratch uh, the part in here. And I can take that smooth end and I can pull around the rim like this, okay? But before I do that, I normally will take the cotton swab dipped in alcohol and I go along the rim. And all of these, uh, you can even see here, I was able to pull, still pull some out of there. Uh, so I, I work with the cotton swab and then I go behind with the little crochet hook. And what I'm trying to do is clear out old grime and that grime is basically lint and oil. Uh, if it's lint, lint alone can be taken out with something like, you know, a lint brush. I have one with these stiff bristles and it'll, it'll, it'll come right out. But when you have lint that's caked in with oil, it creates a kind of a paste. And it's not, it's not that stubborn to get out, but you need to be patient with what you're doing because you have to make several passes at it. So let me get another clean uh, cotton swab here. I'm going to dip it in the alcohol. And I've been going back and forth between the little, the little uh, crochet uh, hook and my, um, and you can see there, you see the little soiling that came off of there? Eventually, you know, it'll stop coming off and I'll have it clean. Now you might think, well, you're just being overly anal retentive. What's the point? You know, you know, you don't have to do all that. Just go in there, make it good and get moving. Well, you can do that, but remember, we've taken this apart to service it. It doesn't take that long. And it, this is also a good place to remind any of you who are uh, 
contemplating purchasing a vintage machine or keeping the one you have, you might think to yourself, God, you know, I don't want to have to do all this. Just give me a modern machine that I don't have to service. And I would, I would push back against that because I always take pains, and I've done this before, and I'll continue to mention, when you see the procedures such as this that I'm performing, this, this servicing is done after many years of a machine either getting just, you know, sort of a rudimentary glance with service or none at all, you know, other than oiling. And this, what this does is it basically make, it prepares the machine for another life of sewing. You know, these machines were made so beautifully and it's amazing how, how long and how well they perform in spite of the fact that sometimes people ignore the maintenance they were meant to have. And it's a shame because, you know, it's just, you know, it's like a, a really beautiful watch or clock. You know, what happens when you actually service it and you, you do what, what the engineers meant for you to do, which was to uh, clean, adjust, uh, lubricate. This applies to things like um, analog cameras, uh, pieces of very fine jewelry, um, and it applies to vintage sewing machines. So it might seem that I you know, was going overboard here with the, um, with the cleaning, but remember this, this hook probably hasn't been cleaned in 20 or 30 years. And yes, it, it, it probably would have formed a stitch, but I, I want whoever gets this machine from me to know that, wow, okay, this is what I'm, this is why I'm not just going and giving $30 for a machine, you know, at a, at a yard sale somewhere, because you don't know how well it runs. You might get lucky, you know, that can happen. Um, but I believe that if you really expect a machine to perform for you, real machines made of metal, they require service, but not very often. Mostly what they require is cleaning the feed dogs of lint, and there was, there was some caked in here and I pulled it out with some of my tools. Um, and you, of course you oil it with the beginning of each project. That's not asking a lot for a machine that is this age, this is early 1960s, right? So it's pushing 60 years old and it is full of life. It's not worn out. But again, unlike the, the plastic disposable uh, machines that we have uh, today, these machines uh, like this one here, they were designed to be maintenance. And they don't ask very much, they don't ask it very often, and what you get in return is a machine that even though it's 60 years of age, uh, should be able to form beautiful stitches and give some really good powerful sewing if you have, uh, you know, you wanna sew some um, heavier fabrics like, like uh, you know, heavy cottons, for example. Um, so, that was what I wanted to cover there. And then I also want to mention, while we're on this subject, the bobbin case. Now, this is the bobbin case. It's an original Husqvarna bobbin case. You hold it like this with thumb and forefinger, and it will hold the uh, bobbin in place. If you just hold it on the outside, the bobbin will want to plop out, and that's okay. In fact, I do want the bobbin to plop out, because I'm going to show you why your bobbin case is nothing to take for granted. Let's see, of course I don't have my scissors here. Where are they? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the thread and get an, a long enough space where I can just break the thread, okay? You'll see my bobbin here. Now, a couple of things about the bobbin case. Uh, first of all, the bobbin case was threaded, and when it was threaded, it was pulled in the direction uh, toward me. Right, toward the camera. And, it, and that piece of thread is left in there. When you pull thread out of a bobbin case, never pull it out backwards from the direction it was threaded. Pull it forwards, like this. Well, that, actually, that thread needs to be replaced. Why? Because it is dry rotted. <laughs> it's been there a while. That's okay. But um, <clears throat> bobbin cases, they may not look like very much, but they are actually very sophisticated uh, tensioning devices. Remember, this is the device that puts tension on your bobbin thread, and you balance that with the tension, of course, on the uh, upper thread, which, which is, you see the tension knob here. Okay, so I got the bobbin case out. Why, you know, what am I gonna do? Now, one of my viewers had a cool suggestion. They said, well, why don't you, um, why don't you put metal polish on this? Now, you guys have seen me use metal polish on a number of, uh, 
uh, nickel or chrome plated pieces on a machine, but I don't do it with things like the hook and particularly bobbing cases. And the reason is waxes and polishes need to be rubbed to a very fine, thin film. And you can see all the crevices in here. And you could really get wax or polish in here and not be able to get to it. And I don't know if it would hurt it, but I don't really want to take the chance. Uh, I want to uh, service the bobbing case while it's here. I know it just looks like a looks like a little bird's egg or something, right? So let's see if we can zoom in and I'll show you. Let's see here. I'll show you a little, uh, one of the reasons your bobbing case deserves a little respect. Okay, take a look on the inner ring here, guys. Uh, on the bottom, I see some old oil. On the side here, I see some oxidation. Now that could be old oil, oxidation, or both. Um, the more red it is, the more it makes me think it's oxidation, but we're gonna take care of that. We're gonna do it in a way though that's safe. And uh, you can see on this side, um, I'm not sure I see much oxidation here. But anyway, uh, that is like the, 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 the insect's view of a bobbin case. Now on the inside, watch this one. This bobbin case is easy to see its movement. You can't always see it. I'm holding it on the outside like I was showing earlier, and when you pinch it, look what happens. You see this? There are moving parts in here, and bobbin cases have springs, and if any of you have ever adjusted the tension in your bobbin case with a screw like you see there, um, there is a spring that tensions. So your bobbin case may look like just a stationary object, but in fact, it is a pretty complex and beautifully machined tool, and it has uh, tensioning moving parts in it, right? Even when the machine's not moving, your, your uh, bobbin case can, uh, as it does when I'm holding it here. So a bobbin case does not need normal every time you sew maintenance. If you have a machine that's sewing well, don't, don't think, oh my God, I gotta stop and I gotta take this, all this apart and start servicing my bobbin case. But remember, many of the machines that I get the vintage machines that a lot of my clients say, oh my gosh, I really like this machine, I wanna get this one. Many of them have sat for a long time and I can't always know where and how well they were cared for. And so it's just an automatic thing. I automatically assume that I'm going to need to service and all of them get the service, whether they look mint and ready to go or whether they got some dust and some old oil on it like this one did. Uh, they all deserve to be serviced. Now, I'm gonna see if this is gonna show up for you guys on the light here. I've got it, I've got the zoom here. Notice I'm, I've got, now this I've got uh, alcohol on the end of my cotton swab. And sometimes there may be in metal, you may see something that looks like a stain. You may see old oil, you may see oxidation, or all of the above. And so what I'm doing is I'm simply following around the outside edge, just looking for anything that might be there because, you know, my bobbin is gonna be inside here. And you want parts that have to play together, that come in contact with each other. They need to be clean and they need to have a fine film of lubricant. And I'll, I'll explain the lubrication part in a minute. Uh, again, one of my viewers who had suggested polish, I really appreciate him doing that because uh, I, I wanted to explain why I don't use polish for these, um, whereas I use it for other parts. And again, waxes and polishes can really do wonders. They can remove oxidation. Uh, they can also, as my viewer pointed out, they can preserve metal because they create a, a film that blocks uh, moisture's access. And that's really good. The, the only thing about it is, is when you're doing it on something that has all these little intricate um, uh, crevices, if you will, for lack of a better word, um, getting, getting wax out of there and getting it all polished is tough because some of the wax and polish is gonna wedge. If I do that, it would wedge in here. It could even wedge in this little opening uh, and that's where thread passes. So again, I, I am sticking to my uh, very fine th film of oil, which I will show again. So here I'm just on the outside, I'm looking for anything that needs to, to come off. This is of course a different bobbing case design 
than say Singer. Singer was copied probably by more companies than any other. But uh, the Swedish company Husqvarna came up with a really, this is a really good uh, engineering design for, um, uh, for a Boeing case. Now I'm taking and I'm looking again, I'm taking the cotton swab and coming around and I'm even, you know, I'm even finding, you guys see on the end there, that to me looks like old oil. Oil will become a varnish as it ages and it dries and it'll often turn a color with, with many years. It takes many years for that to happen. So again, I'm kind of going around. Uh, and again, there's even, I don't know if you can see this in the light. Let me point to it with my, my little uh, crochet hook here. You guys see right here, there's a spring. There's an actual spring. These exist in, in lots of bobbing cases. Most of the time it's hidden, but with the Husqvarna design, uh, it's actually visible and it's actually a good way to point out to you guys to be be nice to your bobbin case because the bobbin case has a lot to do with making a successful stitch and this is why. Now I've still got this little area on the inside of the bobbin case and it looks like I've got for whatever reason just that little spot I have some oxidation there. And one of my the viewer that had mentioned wax and polish was right. Wax and polish can actually do wonders for removing any kind of oxidation. It's very useful. They have, uh, waxes and polishes actually have solvents in them that help break down uh, stubborn, stubborn things like that. So I have done a pretty decent job uh, of cleaning this, but I've got that spot. And I want that spot to, uh, to come off of there before I'm gonna be satisfied. So, you know, if you're, if you're ever working on a sewing machine restoration, uh, it's very common to run into things you don't expect. This is not a problem. I'm going to fix it. And I actually, <clears throat> this is something that oil alone may not remove, but I think I may have found a spot where I can actually use metal polish. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take metal polish because of where this spot is. I'll take polish and I will put the polish on the end and only move my cotton swab like this, okay? I don't want the polish over in this area. Uh, there's no oxidation, okay? And I don't want that there because it's gonna, it's gonna gum up the works, but it'll be fine in this little spot here. So I guess, you know, uh, should sort of update my, my opinion on polish. Yes, I will use polish, but it depends. It depends on where here, where I'm at. I've got to be really careful not to get it into the moving parts because that can create an issue. And then if I do that, then I've got to probably put it in some alcohol and strip it down. It creates an unnecessary project. So um, anyway, that is where I'm at today with uh, basically talking about why I go through so many uh, cotton swabs. And the reason I use these uh, I used to use, use just generic store brand cotton swabs. The only reason I use this particular brand, this is the big giant national brand we all know, they have one and these are called, what do they call these things? Precision tips. And uh, I don't know if they have more cotton, but the cotton is densely packed and tapered. And I find it particularly useful. Uh, any cotton swab, if you overdo it, can, can start to unravel and it can uh, snag and create problems for you. You never want to get cotton fiber stuck in any part of your machine. But if I find that if I wet it with alcohol or oil even, then I am, uh, uh, let's see, I'll do that right now and see if I can see if any of the, any more of this oxidation will come off. Sometimes oil itself will pull oxidation off. You can see some of it coming off there. But anyway, that's the reason I like these. Uh, you know, I don't endorse brands, but in this case, uh, this is the only brand I know that has these tapered tips. Uh, I don't always see them in a supermarket, but I'll often find them in a drugstore. And you can just go in there and, and again, I'm still pulling, you can see on the cotton swab. Uh, the cotton swabs are great because you can tell if some, something's coming off, they're very easy to read. And cotton swabs are cheap, I don't mind, and they're really, I know it sounds kind of silly, but they're one of the main tools I've got. So, uh, I am going to uh, go and access my metal polish, and we'll see what I can pull off here in terms of 
um, and that oxidation and then hopefully the bobbin case will be ready for a new life. Uh, anyway, I will uh, end this video here guys and we'll pick up where we left off. But just wanted to show you those details. Uh, cotton swabs are your friend. They're not expensive. Um, if you get these tapered tip ones, uh, like I said, this is this is Q-tips Precision Tips. Uh, and I find that they are a little stronger and they put up with more of my cleaning than the standard, <clears throat> standard cotton swabs do, whether it's that brand or any other brand. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching, folks. You're getting to see one of the reasons why when you're looking for a vintage sewing machine, if someone tells you that they have overhauled it or restored it or cleaned it or tuned it, whatever words they use, you can actually go back and say, well, can you give me a list of the things you actually did? And, and, and it's not like you're trying to be, to be uh, extra picky. Well, actually you are, you should be, because you're buying a machine that someone has said they've gone through and you need to know what they went through. And that will help you determine the price because most of the time these machines are not rare. Uh, Viking Husqvarna's from this era are not as common as Singer's, of course, but uh, what you really should be paying for is someone's labor because if you don't, then you may need to either pay someone or to do it yourself to really give your machine the advantages that it needs to literally last more lifetimes. Thanks for watching everyone and uh, patiently waiting for these videos to roll out. Uh, I'll try to pick up uh, another video on this. This is a machine that's um, one of my favorites in terms of free arms and hopefully I'll be able to get all of its work done soon. Take care.